God is good. God is good. God is good. And you thank God for good today. Amen. Let's give you a Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you right now. Thank you for this preaching moment, oh God. Just take your word, oh God, that you have prepared, oh God. But let them be a seeds that go out and fall in the good ground, Father, that they may do what you're sending them out to do, that your word will not return to you empty and void, but it'll do what you're sending it out to do, that it'll produce fruit in our lives, some 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100 times. Have your way right now. It's in the wonderful name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 So our theme for 2019 is... Reaching the Unreached. Reaching the Unreached. Okay, good. And this month we're focused on how family reaches the unreached. Amen. So the word today is coming from uh, Luke chapter 8, uh, and its entirety is from verses 40 to 56, but I'm just going to read 45 to 50. Luke chapter 8, verses 40 through 56, I'll just be reading into your hearing verses 8, I mean verses 45 through 50. Amen. Didn't we have a good time on Friday night? Amen. 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 On Thursday night. Amen. 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 And the Lord just stitches everything together. Amen. Amen. Luke 8. I'm going to be reading from the uh, contemporary English version because there were some things there that I, that I liked the way it was uh, translated. <laughs> Um, what's projected on the wall is the New King James Version. And um, you may have a different version in your hands, and uh, I'm sure you'll be able to follow along. Luke 8, starting at 45. Who touched me? Jesus asked. While everyone was denying it, Peter said, Master, People are crowding all around and pushing you from every side. But Jesus answered, someone touched me because I felt power going out from me. The woman knew that she could not hide. So she came trembling and knelt down in front of Jesus. She told everyone why she had touched him and that she had been healed right away. Jesus said to the woman, you are now well because of your faith. May God give you peace. While Jesus was speaking, someone came from Jairus' home and said, your daughter has died. Why bother to teach her anymore? When Jesus... Sorry. Jesus heard this. He told Jairus, don't worry. Have faith and your daughter will get well. Amen. That is the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And God knows what God is doing. So for our topic today, please pray on your topic. Breakthrough faith. Breakthrough faith. Amen. On Friday night, amen, we had a wonderful time out here on movie night. We saw the movie Breakthrough. Breakthrough. Yeah. Amen. Breakthrough. Amen. 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 And in that movie, how, how many have seen the movie? Have you seen Breakthrough? So 
Do you plan to see breakthrough? I don't want to be too much of a spoiler, but <laughs> I think it's been out long enough that you may know what had happened anyway. So you know it's based on it's based on a true story. Do you guys remember? Yes. You remember the movie, TJ? You remember Breakthrough on Friday night? Yeah, yeah. You remember what happened? What was one of the things you remember that happened? Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. What what else? Yeah. Yeah. So this young man, a, a high school student, uh, was with his friends. How old? 14 years old. With his friends. That's amazing how that's going to tie in to something else. Amen. Um, 14 years old. Goes out with friends out on uh, the ice. I don't remember where they lived, but they were in a place that was cold enough for ice in Missouri. It gets cold in Missouri? Yes, Pastor. Okay, in St. Louis, it gets cold enough for ice to form on the, on the lake. And uh, that doesn't happen around here very often, but in the lake was a very deep lake. And these boys, like boys like to do, they like to run out and be adventurous. They were out there playing, and they didn't listen to uh, the parents, right? They didn't listen to the guy that was at the lake and said, stay off the ice. You remember that? And they were out there, and as ice often happens, uh, it broke through. And the boy fell, and all three boys fell into the water. Uh, two of them hanged, hanged on to the edge, but one of them uh, went down into the water and couldn't get up. And he was underwater for more than 20 minutes. Again, this is a true story. He was underwater for 20 minutes, and the rescue team was there fishing around for him, and the man heard a voice say, try again, or go back and try again. And they found him and pulled him up. He was his lifeless body was pulled up, and they began to try to rescue him and do CPR and press on his chest and breathe in him. And but he was still lifeless. When he got to the hospital, he was still lifeless. They called his um, his mother and his father. Uh, uh, this boy was adopted. That kind of complicates it as we talk about family. Um, but anyway, the parents show up at the emergency room and the staff had worked on the, the boy for some 30 minutes trying to revive him and just could not revive him. And they gave up. The doctor said, that's it. That's one of those situations when the doctor walks away. The mother went in and, and she cried and cried out to the Lord, Lord, save my son. Holy Spirit, bring life into this body. And all of a sudden, the heart, his heart started beating again. <laughs> all of a sudden, he came back. Amen, amen. And even then, even then, the doctors were like, I've never seen anything like this before. He's back, but I don't think he's going to make it through the night. And she continued to pray. She continued to tell those doubters, which is just natural, right? I'm not saying anything bad about them, but sometimes we go through life and things happen and we just doubt whether or not God is really going to come through for us. Yes. But she had a breakthrough faith. Yes. Amen. And she told those people to be quiet. Don't talk negative in this entire room. Don't talk negative on this floor because my son is going to get up again. We're just cutting to the chase 28 days later. He was back in school. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And back in church as well, giving God the praise. Amen. People that didn't know God became to know God. People that didn't believe in God. Breakthrough faith will have a breakthrough in their lives. Amen. Amen. And it was just amazing. You would think that a true story like that, that we would be reading about it in the headlines, 
that we would be talking about it over and over again, and we will be because there's a movie out now. Yeah. Amen. Sometimes that's the only way you can reach folks is through the big screen, yeah. through movies. Amen. And uh, my wife was telling me that the producer was Steph Curry. I had no idea, right? Basketball star. Y'all know Steph Curry? Yes. I barely know who he is. But, uh, I think he plays basketball and something about three-point shots and all of that stuff. But anyway, he's got a, he's made a lot of money in his profession. And I'm glad to see that he invested some of that money into making this movie, amen, into producing the movie, amen, because he's a Christian, amen, amen, so he's putting his money in the right place to get the word out, amen, about how powerful our God is, we're in our text today in Luke 8, amen, it follows um, the part of chapter 8 that we're in follows, and I'm going to give you a little more context, because as you look at chapter 7 and even go back to chapter 6, but I'm just going to go back to chapter 7. And when you come to the word as we're focused on family reaches the unreached, and you come to the word with a lens for family, you begin to see things about the family that you didn't notice before. Amen. Amen. And so in chapter 7, you'll see, and I'll just talk about the last part of chapter 7, that... Jesus went to a Pharisee's house for dinner, and while he was there, there was a, a woman that was uh, uh, that they called a sinner that came in and had perfume and wiped his his feet and, and cleaned his feet off, and 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 the, and the people were mad at her for doing this, whether she was wasting money or or whether she was just there drying her his feet with her hair. Uh, the people were upset with her because she was known as a sinner. Yeah. Amen. But Jesus, verse 50 says, but Jesus yeah. told the woman, because of your faith, yes. Yes. amen, you are now saved. Amen. May God give you peace. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. God knows how to transform lives. And then as we get into chapter 8, amen, we learn about these women, amen, that were disciples of Jesus that took of their own earnings and supported Jesus' ministry. They supported the disciples, they poured in of their own funds, amen, to support the master, amen. And as you read through chapter 8, get down to verses 19 to 21, Jesus explains who his real family is. His blood brothers and sisters had showed up, but he said, my family are the ones that want to do the will of God. That want to follow what God wants to do. In verses uh, 26 to 39, there was a, a man that was living in the tombs. And when Jesus went over into Gentile territory and found some uh, pig farms and pig herdsmen in that area, we know he was in Gentile territory. And he came up on this man and the man bowed down to Jesus and said, what do you have to do with me? And eventually he Put those demons out of Jesus. Yes. Uh, Jesus put the demons out of the man. I'm yes. sorry. Yes. And sent them into the swine. Into the pigs. Yes. The pigs ran down the hill and killed themselves. But the man. Was, was delivered. And Jesus said for him to go tell everybody. In his town what God had done for him. And then we get from that into verses 40 through 56. Amen. Amen. The focus of our text today. Jesus is back over in, in Hebrew territory. Back with the Jews now. He's back on the other side of the lake. Back with the Jews. And so there are certain things. I'm just going to summarize a lot of things for you in the interest of time. There's a lot of things that I need you to understand, though, that family experience in the Jewish context there was a few things going on here. A few things in the law, amen, that are relevant to what this story is telling us. That are relevant to the acts that you're going to see here. Don't you know that uh, when families go through things, that sometimes while you're going through something, something else happens. 
And so in our text today, it starts out with Jairus, a leader in the synagogue, a leader in the in the church whose daughter was sick. And he came to Jesus and said, can you help my daughter? Can you heal my daughter? And Jesus said, yes. And while he was on the way, something else happened. A woman who had a, a bleeding problem, who had a hemorrhaging problem, who had a menstruation problem for 12 years, which happened to be the same age as the, the daughter who was 12 years old, this woman for 12 years was going through this situation. And I'll just pause right there to explain the background. So in the law, there's something about being unclean. There's two situations that are relevant here in the text that what it means to be unclean. One is when a woman during that time of month is unclean. And... Um, the law says that everything she touches, everyone that touches her is unclean. Amen. Now we know that the human body was designed for a week at a time, for a month. This lady was experiencing this uncleanness for 12 years, every day for 12 years. Everything she touched was called unclean. Everybody that touched her would be called ceremonially unclean. What it meant to be unclean was they couldn't go to church. They couldn't be around other people. They couldn't be in the context of holiness. They had to be shut off from the things that were called clean. When they were unclean, 12 years, just let that sink in. The other, the other thing that's relevant here is that when there's a dead body, it's unclean. You cannot go and touch someone that's dead or else you will be called unclean. Okay, so keep those two things in mind as we go through and, and expound on what's happening here. But this story lets us know, and the way it's written, and it's written the same way in, in Mark uh, chapter 5, verses 21 to 43 is written similarly, although more condensed in Matthew 9, 18 through 26. I like the way Luke does it. Luke and Mark are, are in sync. They have a lot of the detail in there, and I like the detail in there. But one thing that we know is that when it rains, it pours. Amen. When one thing is happening, something else may happen. When the money is already tight, the layoff notice comes when the relationships are on thin ice. The breakup then comes in a in a culture of loyalty to self and self only. It's all about me. The family members stop speaking to you as well. In the blended family scenario, the, the the where the kids are spending the weekend with mom and the next weekend with dad and coming into that situation as if that wasn't bad enough. Then all of a sudden, dad moves to another state and, and, and is even farther away. Uh, when you want to launch your business, the, the, um, the car breaks down. Amen. Amen. When you put all your money into launching that business, the car breaks down and you're tight on funds. Whatever your challenges are, whatever your disappointments are, sometimes when it rains, it pours. Another thing comes up. So in our text... There's a dead girl. She's unclean. She's outcast. Not to be touched according to the law. Where we read when Jesus finished with one, they came and told her the girl is already dead. Don't bother the teacher. But while he was dealing with the woman with her issues, amen, in this unclean state, 12 years unclean, it reminded me of the movie uh, How They See Us. Where Asante Black, who's a 17-year-old graduate of Charles County uh, North Point High School, just graduated in, in May or June of 2019. And I understand that he's been nominated for an Emmy Award for his first professional acting job in this movie on Netflix called How They See Us. How many of you have you seen How They See Us? Amen. Amen. I encourage you to see it. It's about 
the story of the um, Central Park Five, these five young men that were falsely accused of rape and were sent to jail. Falsely accused and then falsely convicted and sent to jail through no fault of their own. Only because of, really, the color of their skin and how they see us. Amen. Amen. So he played the role of the 14-year-old. The 14-year-old connections. He played the role of the 14-year-old in the movie. This movie, I thought, was so impactful that it's still real today. Except instead of the danger of our children being falsely arrested and convicted, they're in danger of, of the judge, jury, and prosecutor and executioner right on the street. Through the form of police officers that will gun people down for nonviolent actions. Somebody selling cigarettes on the corner gets choked to death. Somebody that's, that's, that's playing with a BB gun gets shot. With, in, in an instant, two seconds on the scene, not even long enough to see what's going on, gets shot dead. So the dangers are real. The dangers are real. But in this movie, these young men spent time in jail, spent time in prison, spent years away from their families, years away, years being outcasts. Young people sentenced as adults in this movie that you'll see. Again, based on real events. Being called a pack of animals, dehumanizing ways. Being violated, experiencing violence and assault. Isolated and solitary confinement. Moved far away from family. No attempt to teach or to rehabilitate them. For years, they were going through this. And then they had the challenge of re-entering society, re-entering, trying to get things back to normal, re-entering, trying to find a job. Now, how hard is it to find a job when you have a record? It's practically impossible because one of the questions they ask on the application is, have you ever been arrested before? Have you ever been convicted? Do you have a felony? And even if it's false, there's no way that for you to explain your way out of it. Nine nonviolent drug possession, all of a sudden, after decades of, of putting our people in jail for a few grams of, of marijuana, all of a sudden, what? It's being legalized. You have to tell your people at work, hey, it might be legal in D.C., but that doesn't mean you can smoke it here. That doesn't mean you can smoke it and work here because we still do your analysis tests. We had to tell people in Colorado, I know it's legal to smoke out there, but don't smoke it if you want to work here. You got to explain to people all of these things. Can you imagine the generation that's coming up now in 20 years from now when they're thinking that, oh, mom, dad, I thought y'all, I thought it was legal when y'all were coming up. Is legal now. I thought it was legal then. Right? They have no concept unless we teach them the dangers of what's going on. It must be legal, so it must is legal, so it must be okay. These challenges of re-entering society are real. The woman in our text today had faith when she heard Jesus was near. So there's three things in this text that comes out of this that God wants us to understand, that God wants us to practice in our lives. Amen. About breakthrough faith. Amen. The first thing is that breakthrough faith overcomes fear. Yes. Breakthrough faith overcomes fear. This woman was isolated from society. She was isolated from the norms. For 12 years, she might as well have been locked up in prison. Going through her childbearing years, like we said this morning, there's another text in, in, in the word that says that if you're not having children, then that's a curse from God. So they read the text and they believe these things in this society back then that she couldn't have children because she was going through this thing. Why? Because she was unclean. 
And as I came to this text with the focus on family, I had to realize that there was no mention of her family. Amen. It made me wonder what happened to the family. Where was her spouse? Where was her husband at? Where were the children at? If she had any, there was no mention of them. It makes it sound like she is alone and isolated. And not only that, she ran out of all of her money. So she's flat broke. No money. Spend it all. And I believe that's important there because at the beginning of Luke 8, it set it up to let us know that women did have their own money. Because in Luke 8, these disciples, in Luke 8, in the first few verses, these disciples, these women disciples, the text tells us that they spent up their own money to support Jesus' ministry. So we know women had their own money, so she had her own money, but here she is, she spent it all over the last 12 years on doctors trying to get better, being called unclean, yelling out unclean. Whenever she went out somewhere, whatever she touched was unclean. Nobody could touch her. Fear must have been strong in her life. Fear of being found out. Fear of what might happen. But I tell you, when Breakthrough Faith heard about Jesus, yes, go ahead, sir. when Breakthrough Faith heard that Jesus was coming by, yes, you see, when Breakthrough Faith overcomes fear, yes. that makes you intentional. Yes. Yes. But she was intentional. Her touch was a different touch from the crowd's touch. Jesus was surrounded by people and people bumping into Jesus. There were all kinds of people touching Jesus at that moment. But it was her touch. What was different about her touch from their touch? Her touch was intentional. They were just there. Jesus just happened to be there. Have you ever been in a situation and we need to check our relationships? Is Jesus just there? Is Jesus present and you're bumping into him, but you have no intention? Yeah, I'm glad you're coming to church. I'm glad Jesus is present. I'm glad you're spending some time with him from 11 to 1. But are you intentional? Are you coming in to touch Jesus? Are you spending the day touching Jesus with intent, not just bumping into him because he's there already? Breakthrough faith overcomes fear. She was in fear of being found out. And you can tell that fear didn't end because as she, as Jesus said, power left my body. Who touched me? And she knew that she was discovered. All the people around, even though they were bumping into Jesus, Jesus, I didn't touch you. They were denying it. Even Peter said, all these people are standing around touching you. What are you talking about, Jesus? Somebody touched me with intention. I felt the virtue. I felt the power leave out of my body. She came, what was her? Trembling. Kneeling. Trembling. Scared. Why? Because she was out of place. She wasn't supposed to be there amongst the crowd. She made the whole crowd unclean, except for one thing. When she touched Jesus, she was instantaneously healed. And when you have breakthrough faith that overcomes fear, amen, you can be intentional. You can get outside the box. You can see God's possibilities, and you can go and touch Jesus for yourself. Amen. Amen. And when Jesus saw her, he said, your faith has healed you. That leads us to the second practice that we need to know. Breakthrough faith leads to miracles. Yes. Breakthrough faith leads to miracles. This is significant here because the Greek belief system said that faith came after the miracle. They would see something spectacular happen and then they got faith. That was the Greek explanation. But Jesus' explanation was that faith leads to miracles. You don't have faith because of the miracle. You have faith because of Jesus. Breakthrough faith leads to God doing amazing things. Breakthrough faith leads to the unexplainable. Breakthrough faith 
least the things that you haven't seen before. Yes, yes, yes. I'm just going to call them all miracles. Amen. The things you can't explain. Yeah. Amen. When God made a way out of no way, when you couldn't figure it out, when the money ran out and nothing was happening for you, when one thing happened another after another and you got down on your knees and you prayed and all of a sudden Jesus showed up. Yes. Amen. And made a way out of nowhere. Yes. Amen. Amen. Not only did the woman show breakthrough faith, Jairus' family also showed breakthrough faith. Verses 49 through 51, when Jesus got to Jairus' house, he put everybody out of the house. The people were there crying. They had already, you remember, somebody had already come and told, told them, your daughter's already dead. Don't bother the teacher. Why? Because the teacher can't do nothing about it now. The teacher, she's unclean. She can't, he can't go touch her. Jesus got there and he just kept the, the parents, the mother and the father, the family, and his three closest disciples that he had already explained earlier that this, this is my family. James, John, and Peter, he brought them in. And he said, just believe. Verse 50, the thing I was getting choked up on, and I'm sorry, when Jesus heard this, he told Jairus, don't worry, have faith. I'm going to say have breakthrough faith and your daughter will get well. Breakthrough faith leads to miracles. I believe that they were obedient to Jesus and they had the type of faith that allowed Jesus to move in a mighty way. Amen. The church, the church, the church has purpose. Yes. Amen. Amen. This scenario right here was a foreshadowing of the church's purpose. Yes. Amen. The, the parents and the disciples represented the church. Yes. Yes. The dead girl represented those that are lost in this lost and dying world. Yes. Yes. And we, Jesus said, come alongside me and believe what I can do. Have faith in the situation. Yes. They might be dead right now, but have faith. Amen. Will the church break social norms and demonstrate breakthrough faith? Yes, Lord. Will you allow the Holy Spirit to come in and get into your life and, and, and do what Psalms 119, 9 and 11 says? 119, 9 and 11 says, I've hid your word in my heart yes. that I might not sin against you. Yes. Will the unexpected come to life when there are dead situations in your in your family? Will you forgive that family member and love them instead? Will you forgive your neighbor and love them instead? Will you forgive those in the church and connect to them in, in, in any way? Will your iron sharpen iron? I tell you, breakthrough faith leads to miracles. Things that you just can't explain. And then the last part, the shouting moment, the practice number three. Yes, yes. Breakthrough faith raises the dead. Yes. Yes. Verses 52 to 56. When they were in there, Jesus touched. Jesus got out of bounds and touched the dead body. Jesus is authorized to get out of bounds. Amen. You might feel like you're in an out of bounds situation and nobody can do anything for you. But I'm here to let you know clearly and surely that Jesus can get out of bounds. When he's moving on your behalf, Jesus can get out of bounds for you. When you're hopeless and you're outcast, Jesus can get out of bounds for you. That 12 year old girl right at the time of her life where she's getting ready to become a woman where there's new hopes and new dreams, she's lying there dead. Yes, yes, yes. But Jesus showed up. Amen. And the church was right there with them. Yes. Like the movie Breakthrough, that mother asked, what is breakthrough prayer? Amen. What is that prayer that makes a difference nobody had? An answer for her, but God took her through something yes, that she would learn for herself what breakthrough prayer was. Sometimes God moves us through situations that seem so hard and so unfair that we ask God, why are you taking me through this? 
God wants you to take you to a point where you've got to demonstrate yes, go ahead. some breakthrough faith. I tell you, I don't want you to leave scared wondering what God is going to do next. But I'm going to tell you that God has been preparing you for some breakthrough faith. God has been preparing you and building you and feeding you and growing you and strengthening the foundation in this church. Amen. That whether it's the men at the homeless shelter, whether it's the women that we're going to reach out and meet, whether it's the ones in prison, whether it's families that are broken that are going to be coming in here. That's so and joining with us as we reach out and go get them and tell them the good news of the gospel. People with dead marriages and dead relationships are going to be coming back to life again. That dead end job is going to be transformed into new possibilities. That dead mindset where I say I can't and I won't is going to be transformed so that you say that I can and I will. That dead spirit is going to be coming alive through who? Through Jesus. Excuse my English. Through whom? Through Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want y'all to know I've been educated in Prince George's County. Amen. Amen. God has been good to us. God demonstrates how breakthrough faith raises the dead. And this was just a precursor for showing the raising of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Breakthrough faith raises the dead. Breakthrough faith leads to miracles. Breakthrough faith ex uh, uh, overcomes fear. Amen. Amen. And if you're wondering, how can I get this breakthrough faith? I tell you, if you just have Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. Amen. He's experienced these things already on your behalf. And when you receive Jesus as your Savior and he comes in and lives inside of you, I tell you, you can live this kind of breakthrough faith life. Amen. Because Jesus had breakthrough faith that overcame fear. Amen. In the Garden of Gethsemane, you remember, he was asking the Lord, Lord, if it's your will, please take this cup away from me. It's getting hard right now. I'm scared of what's coming up next. Then he said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Jesus had breakthrough faith that leads to miracles when he was on the cross. Our sins, yes. your sins, my sins, everyone's sins were nailed to the cross in that great exchange when Jesus died up on the cross yes. and exchanged you. our eternal life, yes. our eternal death rather, for eternal life. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. That great exchange and Jesus had breakthrough faith that raises the dead. Yes. Amen. He died up on that cross. He was buried in somebody else's tomb. But I'm glad that on Sunday morning that he got up out of the dead. He was raised up. God raised him up. And he got up out of the grave. And for that we can celebrate. For that we can shout out. For that we can thank God. Amen. Amen. That he showed us breakthrough faith. God for the blood. Amen. 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 If you're here today and you've never received Jesus Christ as your Savior, I want you to know without a doubt that He died for you. He wants He may be knocking on the door of your heart right now and wants to come in and live inside of you. If there's one here today that's never received Jesus Christ as your Savior, you want to make that decision today to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. We invite you to come. Is there one? Is there one today? You may already know the Lord as your Savior and you're serving the church home. Is there one today that wants to join us here at New Life? Amen. 